Well, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. Today, very excited to check out Top Spin from Helvetic. This is for two to six players, ages six to 99. It'll take about 15 minutes to play. And in Top Spin, you're going to be taking a top and you're going to be spinning it inside of a box in the hopes of getting these little wooden marbles into different holes that have numbers on them. And those holes are going to help you win the game. It's a very light, very simple game about spinning a top in a box. Is that good, though? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Top Spin. So first and foremost, we have our handy-dandy rule booklet. Uh, you're going to need four pages, double-sided. It's got a couple pictures and illustrations. It's very well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. And also, I can teach you how to play the game right now because it is ridiculously simple. So in Top Spin, you are going to be taking this top inside of this box insert, and your goal is to try to get the little balls into the circles that have the numbers around the outside. You're going to do that for one of two different ways because there are two different ways to play the game. There's the battle mode and the challenge mode. Here's your handy dandy player pad. It is one-sided which annoys me but man look at all those spaces. So I can forgive it for just how many spaces there are in this game. So tons and tons of play there. So let's talk about the two different game modes. First we have the battle mode. So in battle mode you're going to have as many players as you want. It says up to six but honestly you could play this with a hundred players. You really could. It just take a while. First person is going to go. They're going to spin the top and their goal is to try to get the balls into the little things and unfortunately for this person they got zero but let's pretend that they got one in. so in this particular instance they would have four to help you with scoring if they also had this they would have seven points now they would have 13 points now they would have 25 points so as you can see the number of uh, balls you get in the circles you just add that up and that's how many points you got so let's pretend for this example they ended up with four points now the next person is going to go and they have to either reach for or beat for in order to not lose a life so let's see what they got come on Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we got a six. We're money. Oh, 14, baby. So we got a 14, which means now that person has 14. And the next person is going to have to beat 14. Let's see. They got a four. That's a good start. We got the oh, so we got a 10. We got, oh yeah, we got a 16. Wow, 24. That's great. So we got 24, which means the next person would have to beat 24. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens if I only would have got 14? Well, if you got 14, you have to meet the number of the person in front of you or exceed. So as long as you don't get less than the person in front of you, then you don't lose a life. So now this person's really shaking in their boots. They have to get 24. Probably not going to do it, but let's see. Give it the old college try, and sure enough, they get 12, which is admirable, but not going to do it. So what would happen is you would look at the person who just spun. They would mark out a heart and lose a life, and then they go next to restart the round. So you're never going to lose two in a row. Well, you're never going to lose two in a row quickly like that. That'd be a very poor start, which means the next person has no pressure on them whatsoever. Anywho, this is a player elimination game where you're going to go until someone, uh, until everyone has been eliminated. Only one person is left. The one person that is left is the winner of the battle mode. Now let's talk about the challenge mode, which has all the numbers. Also, incredibly simple, what you're going to do in your turn is you're going to spin and you're going to try to get the, 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 yeah, the balls into the circle. So that would be a terrible roll. The next player would go. They do the same thing. They got themselves an 11. Good for them. So what would they do? They'd look on the score pad under their name, which is an invisible ink, and they would mark out the 11. And the first person to get 1 through 12 is going to win the game. And that's pretty much the challenge mode. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play the two different versions of Top Speed. Alrighty then, top spin from Helvetic. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Biggest reason? Well, of course, this is a game about taking a top and spinning it on the inside of a box and hoping balls go into numbers. There's no real strategy here. There is no, like, ultimate path to victory. It's just, it's completely 100% random. I'm sure there's some way that you could, like, you know, make the top and spin the top in a certain precise way to get, like, numbers on this side or that side. But for 99.9% .9 of people, this is a completely luck-driven game, which will be a turnoff to a lot of people. Also, the game can drag out, especially on the challenge mode of the game. The battle mode doesn't really drag out that much, but it does have player elimination, which will bug some people. But the game's so quick that I didn't mind the player elimination. But the challenge mode will inevitably turn out to, oh, you need a 4, you need a 7, you need an 8. Let's just spin... Spin, no four, spin, no seven, spin, no eight, spin, no four, spin, no seven, spin, no eight, spin, no four, spin, no seven, spin. And it just kind of drags out longer than you might want it to be. But once again, it wasn't that big of a deal because the game is so short. It's such a super short game. Um, so there you go. It, I mean, there's not really too many cons 
that I can tell you about this game. The basic premise of the game is spinning a top in a box. It feels like a game that could have been designed by a seven-year-old. So that that kind of just covers most of the cons that I have with the game. Oh, also, if you're looking to play this with younger kids, if they don't have fine motor skills, like good fine motor skills, if they're not really good at spinning the top, they might get frustrated with this game. And honestly, even if you're really good at spinning the top, sometimes you'll spin the top and just nothing will pop up and you'll be like, oh, well, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. It's all completely random. Moving on to the pros, though, uh, I had fun with Top Spin. I really did. I had fun in the class with Top Spin. I had fun with some very skeptical adults who I played Top Spin with on my game night, uh, and, and we enjoyed the game. And it is a fun, light, simple game. Super easy to learn, super easy to teach. The middle part of the video is three minutes, and that's me teaching you how to play both versions of the game, and I doubt you're going to have any questions after... The, the middle part. And this is one of those games that you can have out, you can teach in a minute, and you can play it in five to ten minutes, especially if you're playing the dual mode. Uh, also, with the dual mode, one thing that I really like is it says two to six players, but honestly, with the dual mode, you could play, I think, like 15, 20, 30, 35 players, as long as you don't mind the downtime between turns. There's no reason why you could not play this with more players. We did. We played a 12 player version of this with the kids in my class, and a lot of fun was had, and it was, uh, it was really enjoyable. So, in the end, Top Spin, if you're looking at this as a family game, I think this is a great family game. I, I really do. I think, well, you know what? I want to say it's a very good family game. I don't want to say it's a great family game because I, I worry about the legs of this game. I feel like this is a good... This, I feel like this is a really good game to play with people who don't play games that often. Like, if you get this out at, like, Christmas or Thanksgiving or Kwanzaa or whatever holiday you celebrate and, and you play it with people who don't normally play games, I think they're really going to get a kick out of this. This is the kind of game they might request from year to year to year. I feel like as a lightweight filler game, if you're waiting for somebody to get here, maybe you got a five-player game night, you got four people there, and you're just like, oh, he's still be here in ten minutes. You know, that sort of thing. I feel like this is a good game to have in your collection. I feel like, yeah, as a family game, if you're playing this with your family, I think this is a really fun before bedtime type, type game. Uh, I know once my son gets a little bit better with the fine motor skills, I'll be like, all right, you want to play a game before bed? Let's play Top Spin. It's going to take us five, ten minutes, and boom, he'll be in bed. I feel like this game has a lot of different uses that you could use it for. Is it a game night style game where you're going to play it in the middle of the game night? No, it's not, obviously. I mean, it's completely luck driven. It's completely random, but it's still fun. And I enjoyed the game and I will be keeping this game both for my classroom and for my home use and potentially as a filler game on game nights when people are like, really, are we spinning a top in a box? And I'll be like, trust me, it's some fun. Uh, oh, and in case you're wondering, I do like the dual mode better than the challenge mode. I just found it more interesting despite the fact there is player elimination. But either way, I would play either of them. So there you go. That is Top Spin, the wild and addictive top game. I don't know how wild it is or addictive, but yeah, it's fun. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Were you a big Tops fan when you were a kid? For me personally, no, but I didn't have a lot of pogs. And I remember really loving, like, spinning Wow, that's a weird finger motion. Really love spinning uh, slammers. So I used to spin slammers all the time and see how many slammers I could get spinning at the same time, which is pretty much like playing with a top, but not quite. Well, let me know in the comments below. Did you play with tops when you were a kid? As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.